All right, so the Houston Cougars are officially in the Big 12 now, and we may be finding new foes as we jump into it. Let's get it. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, it's Locked On Cougs host Parker, Parker Ainsworth here to host all things Houston Cougars. But I'm joined today, and the reason I'm throwing off and thinking my words a little bit, because we're, we're a little animosity, and I'm a little bit like, what are we about to talk about? Because I'm not sure what direction these go. I'm joined by Drake Toll of Locked On Baylor again. Um, but first, before we get into some stuff that might get ugly, Jerry, how you doing? Dude, I'm the most hated guy in Houston. I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> that's our thing i mean the rockets have had scott foster yeah. the texans have done some of their own own stuff on the inside the sean watson has moment of that in houston as well um you know my fires and the astros but you seem to be yeah. the ire of houston cougar football fandom at least right now i'm sure it'll only spiral upwards as we get to basketball season um but you you went on a, a tire of the day we're going to address that we'll talk about some about the whole big 12 looking at houston and what these new teams are looking like in the conference um you're in alaska right now safely yeah. and i'm not going to give you i guess your exact location away but safely a long way away from the lone star state um i've got to ask because in pre-pod you said it is 55 you did fireworks mm -hmm. at midnight and the sun was still out yeah. What has been the most shocking thing about being in Alaska as a guy that's been in Texas the last four years? Oh, dude, the sun's crazy, man. Uh, I know that me bring humanity to myself really they just the trolls are going to hate it but yes i'm a real human person parker <laughs> and i do real human things no matter what you all say to me on the youtube comments and i go out in alaska and i see the sun all the time it's only the sun only exists everywhere here and it rains all the time and it's 55 degrees apparently this is one of the worst summers on record up here in anchorage um but dude, i'm still having a blast i've climbed a few mountains i have seen snow i've been snowed upon i've seen a bald eagle parker fly into the ocean, take a fish out of the ocean, perch, and then eat said fish while a second bald eagle flew overhead. Uh, it's been a very American summer here in Alaska. <laughs> and if, you, if you're out there and you, and you have been, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's a must do. I'm having a blast. So in that eagle metaphor, I think Houston fans are going to make you the fish. They're hoping I'm one of the two yes. eagles, <laughs> to say the least. Um, all right, so... For folks that have just been on my channel and not checked out Locked on Baylor, A, it's a good show. You should go enjoy it. But B, you had a guest on and y'all yeah. skewered Houston and I'll say Central Florida because I don't care much about them either. Um, and just said that the Big 12 should not have done this mm -hmm. quickly in like a spark notes type version. What was the argument for someone who didn't hear that episode? Yeah, um, I would be shocked. What rock have you been under if you haven't seen that <laughs> at this point? Um, we, I know the UCF fans were really, really vocal about in response about that podcast, and that's what it was supposed to be tailored towards most. It was UCF, uh, and, and I knew we were going to go after them because it is the loudest, grossest fan base on Twitter, <laughs> I think, in the entire world. So I thought, what if I poke this bear? Let's see what happens. So I brought Parker or uh, Harper Mayfield on, and local sports guy works at the, for the university here at Baylor and really knowledgeable, really good at, at bringing forth big opinions that he's got that he's going to back up. So he brought UCF to the table and made a lot of great cases about UCF. And then he delivers Houston in the same vein. He was begging me, let me talk about Houston. Let me talk about UCF. And I brought him on and he did. Um, and really the gist of it for Houston, when you look at Director's Cup and history and and, and Houston Athletics just doesn't have the history of a, of a BYU that you add and some other teams that you thought might be on the table. And could the Big 12, had they waited it out, gotten some Pac-12 teams or some a ACC teams, what would that have looked like? So his entire case was, all right, Houston top to bottom athletically is not elite in his view. And Houston football coming into the conference, as you've now seen with these preseason polls and zero players on the all Big 12 preseason team, Houston in his mind, was not up to part of the Big 12. Now, do I carry all of those opinions? No, but I see where the sentiment comes. And again, you're seeing that being reinforced in the preseason polls, and you're seeing it reinforced with zero Houston players on the All-American team. I, I just, I, when I look at this Houston squad, I'm not scared. And I, I think that was the thesis. If one thing could be summed up in everything, I'm not scared. Well, and so I think what's interesting to Houston folks like myself, 
um, A, obviously there's the folks that are older than me that want to point out, like, if we hadn't been left out back in the mid-90s, we'd be yeah. like, it's a catch-up, right? They, they want to pull that card, and, and I think there's some validity there because Houston had a great run in the 80s, and Houston had a great right, 80s in football and basketball, honestly, and then they had runs before that with the Veer and stuff like that as well. But when I look at Baylor, and I'm older than yourself, I'm, I'm 32, I think I got you by a decade. Yeah. When I think of Baylor, I think of like the pre-Art Bryles Baylor, like, oh my God, that football program was in the dumpster. And so mm -hmm. I don't mean to, I know that that's not the program you grew up with and not the program you've cheered on in your lifetime. But when I think of Baylor, I think of them as also being at the bottom of the Big 12. And I'm oh, like, yeah. if anyone understands that you can be at the bottom of the Big 12 and still be a Big 12 program, it should be Baylor, <laughs> right? right? right. It, well, it's it, Baylor was Kansas before being Kansas was cool. This was the <laughs> worst athletic department Literally, I mentioned Houston top to bottom. This was literally top to bottom. Baylor didn't eclipse its first national championship until 2005, despite being the oldest university in Texas chartered in 1845, and it was men's tennis. So <laughs> nobody could really sell it. It was like, oh, yes, you couldn't watch well, it on TV. The private I mean, school uh, winning men's tennis also. Like, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. Like, right. There's it, something it to that. <laughs> total sense. A lot like, the, you know, there's and every every school has its sport, right? Arkansas fans will beat your door down on track and field and cross country. They'll tell you how good they are. And Baylor has won eight straight acrobatics and tumbling national championships that will be an NCAA sport in two years. Houston has the history in men's golf. Every team, every school, meet judging at Kansas State. Everybody's got it, right? Well, Baylor didn't have any any of that until about that, that 2005 mark with Kim Mulkey and men's tennis. And then you get to Art Bryles, who left Houston and, and had success at Baylor. And the football program has been as good as it's been the last 15 years. I tell you what the problem has been. You hit the nail on the head. Houston hasn't been a power five school. They have not been in a power conference in in over two decades. That's what hurt Houston so much. Baylor and Richards, you had all these conversations of, oh, what is that going to look like? Are they going to stay a power conference? Do they deserve to? Probably not. Houston probably deserved to be a power team more than Baylor. But Grant Taft did just <laughs> enough in his two decades at Baylor to keep this team at the forefront of athletics. And Richards did just enough. There are all these people who were like, oh, no, keep Baylor in the power conference. Let them be in the doldrums. And they were. They sucked for a long time. Last 15 years, though, that's that's been reversed. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, you mentioned men's tennis in 05, and that really – I kind of assumed when you said 05 I was like was that when the women's basketball thing started because it all did kind of start happening shortly thereafter yep. um yep. 05 being about a decade after having that power five money i don't think houston will take a decade to have any success the power five money because you have some houston resources that you know i Waco is charming, and I, and I actually bigger like than Waco. Yeah, <laughs> like, it just does, right? I will yeah. say that I, I enjoy the Bucky's right there in Temple when I go up and down I thirty five quite a bit. Um, I I look at Baylor as like almost in a weird way, uh, not quite the TCU blueprint because it wasn't a true expansion team the way TCU was when they joined right. the Big Twelve, but the way it rapidly grew. I was like, oh, that's what we want to do. And then to see this back and forth, like, no, it feels like the Baylor big bully on the playground. Like, no, 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 we got here. You stay there. We got here right back and forth. Um, and I guess my intrigue in, in breaking this down with you was, is there any thought from Baylor or Tech or Oklahoma State or these schools not in a place like Houston? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. now we're inviting the fourth biggest city in America into the dance right and like baylor's got a lot of kids from the houston area tech yeah. has a lot of kids from the houston area is there something like where you, you don't want houston to be that big or is that is that me making something out of nothing so here's and again i think you're right on it here's why i wore a unc tar heels hoodie today because <laughs> i i don't want to come in here screaming baylor at everyone that this is the opinion that all baylor people have i was like what other hoodies do i have that i don't have to i, I don't want to represent the face of baylor in this conversation because i don't know if it's a generally held opinion but to me there comes a point in expansion where it stops being let's all play mr nice guy if this conference is going to be a fun legitimately respected conference in college athletics teams have to start hating each other they don't right now <laughs> they just don't hate Nate, what parker what's the biggest rivalry in the new big 12 oh it's everyone versus sex oklahoma and that's because they're leaving that, that's exactly. it that's it yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the problem there's no biggest show in town like, oh everybody's got it circled thanksgiving week these two teams play oh farmageddon nobody cares <laughs> 
teams have to start hating each other at some point. And every fan base has been, oh, I love BYU. I love Houston. I love the new teams we got. Thanks for coming to the Big 12 and saving us. It, it's got to stop for the entertainment value to grow. It can't be, oh, what a fun little game we played there on Saturday. Good job, you guys. Teams have to resent one another. Rivalries have to be born. Whether it comes from the talking heads or fans or big games, it has to happen. And that's why I think there are teams like Texas Tech, you mentioned Oklahoma State, who look down upon Houston, who look down upon UCF, BYU, because at some point a rivalry has to be born. And these big dogs, what they would consider themselves because they've been in the Big 12 so long, want to assert their dominance. I want to keep talking because I, I like to put this rivalry up too, and, and I think that's fun. But if we're going to talk about fun, we also need to talk about the fun you can have over at FanDuel. Now, FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and you can take your first swing at betting on MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet back in bonus bets. It's up to $200. First, Drake, do they have FanDuel in Alaska? Are you allowed to, is that FanDuel state? Oh, they have FanDuel, brother. <laughs> and I have used that FanDuel. Um, what I love too, so I'd kind of gotten into a groove of, because there's some states where you can't access all the amenities of FanDuel. So I'd gotten into a trend, when I, especially in Texas, where I would go and just use FanDuel specifically for lines, sports betting lines and talking points. And that's that's huge. I can scroll for hours on FanDuel and just see that, oh, shoot. What do you say? The Astros are plus a thousand? Plus a thousand right now to win right. the World Series. Yeah. Despite being a Rangers fan, that's worth putting $10 on, right? I, I love those talking points that FanDuel gives you. Again, could scroll for hours, especially on upcoming college football stuff. I, I'm a big FanDuel guy. Big, big FanDuel and big, big FanDuel fun to be had. Uh, it's just 20 bucks. You can land up to $200 back in bonus bets, win or lose. As you mentioned, the Astros, and I'm seeing the Rangers as well, are b both plus 1,000 to win the World Series. Um, the Rangers had a heck of a start to the year. Go check out the Locked On Baseball shows to hear more about that. But that's a fun, fun rivalry if we're talking about rivalries to keep on going. All, you can do all this betting on fanduel.com slash locked on. Uh, get $200 back in bonus bets. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel, an official major league partner, official partner of Major League Baseball. Um, all right. So, Drake, I, I got to ask about this rivalry because I don't know if it's going to be like if there was uh, Notre Dame and Miami was Catholics and convicts. So can we do like Baptist versus the Bayou? Like, what are we going to uh. do? There's got to be something here between the two because Waco and Houston both as schools in Baylor and Houston and the cities in Waco and Houston are as different as you can get really across this conference. Um, is there something to do with Bryles? It, where, where can we stem this from? Is this something you feel like you're drumming up out of nothing or is there something deeper there? It's going to be tough. The reason that I'm trying to drum it up is because it's going to be tough. Parker, if I – and here's uh, some other talking points that, that we've gone with when it comes to Houston. Number 49 recruiting class per 24-7 in the class of 2023. They're currently at number 77 in the class of 2024. Plenty of time to put those – put 2024 together, I know, but right now those numbers don't jump off the page. Preseason Big 12 standings, Houston's at number 12 out of 14 teams, only in front of Cincinnati and West Virginia. Uh, in my rankings, I had Cincinnati a slot above them. West Virginia, I, I think the bottom feeder of the Big 12 going into this next year. Houston and, and BYU and Cincinnati, all of them down there at the very bottom of these rankings. No Houston players in the preseason, um, preseason all Big 12 teams. Again, I, I know I brought that stuff up already, but I bring it up again to say for this rivalry to start, Houston's got to walk into the Big 12 and surprise some people. Great example. Missouri comes into the SEC. They create a rivalry with Arkansas, the battle line rivalry, right? Arkansas fans laugh at it. It's like, oh, Missouri will beat them every year. Missouri has lost to Arkansas three times in the last decade. They've dominated, dominated this series. So it hasn't even become a rivalry. Houston could do that. Houston could reverse the card, could beat everybody. And then it's no rivalry because Houston's the best team in the conference. But until Houston proves they can do something like that, I am just drumming stuff up. They've got to show, they've got to work their key. Well, and I think it's interesting because you mentioned the 2023 class and there's been a lot of, frankly, my listeners, so there's been a lot of talk about that class because Holgerson went, you know, attempted to go more of the transfer route yeah, um, yeah. because he wanted to have guys who are big 12 ready. There's been, you know, mixed opinions about how that went. He had a couple, he had one key offensive lineman lead, but brought in some key defensive players back. Da, 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 right. Well, we talk about that on my channel a lot. If you are from Baylor and want to go check that out, go check it out. I think it's interesting to see that there have been so few commitments in the 2024 class, yeah. and it appears to be a whole lot of kids have offers and have Houston in their top five or top eight or whatever. And it's like, let's see what you guys do, right? Like, like let's see yeah. what happens in year one. And frankly, 
beating Baylor on November 4th, right, to start, you know, wrapping up the season, whatever, that would be a big win in that, yeah. you know, here's what they're doing this year kind of category. Houston does have to go to Baylor on November 4th. Um, what year was that? Sta- the stadium still feels fairly new. McLean. 2014. What, what? McLean. 2014. Oh, so it's about a decade. I guess it's older than I realized. Um, 10 years. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, anyway, that, that would be a big, big marker for them. Um, they get, yeah. West Virginia at home, that'll be a big, you know, again, we're both putting West Virginia low, ought to be a win. Mm-hmm. Um, Texas Tech, they have a fairly simple schedule for themselves. So I think that some of those wins could could help that recruiting class 2024 a lot. Um, when I look at drumming couple rivalry with Baylor, though, I think it's got to be Baylor or Tech or TCU. There's yeah. something about being in the state of Texas that I think is very, very important to this. I almost wish TCU was in Dallas and not Fort Worth because there's a natural Houston and Dallas thing. Mm-hmm. right um fort worth culturally is a little bit different um before drumming this up with houston who would you have called baylor's rival in the in conference it would it would be uh oh, here's what's weird i had a shirt when i was a kid i know i brought up arkansas a couple times but i always try to give i try to give you know different metaphors and whatnot bring new things in for our even our baylor listeners uh, when i was a kid i had a shirt that said the good the bad the ugly and for Arkansas, it was the good, Arkansas, the bad, Ole Miss, and the ugly was LSU. That's we. That's who we hated, right? For Baylor, when I think the good, the bad, the ugly, it is the good being Baylor, the bad being TCU, the ugly was Texas. And the big thing was, maybe it's not the biggest rivalry, Baylor and Texas, but dude, Baylor kind of dominated UT in for a historical comparison over the last decade. I think it was five and five, but that five and five goes a long way when you could only beat them <laughs> once every 10 years. Yeah. So yeah. that had become uh, – Baylor fans loved beating Texas, but losing to TCU stung so much more because Baylor fans put themselves in higher regard than than TCU. So I, I would have considered Baylor and TCU to be a, a, pro, a prominent rivalry, a top-five rivalry coming into, into the new Big 12. Um, but Houston's right there. And, and again, Parker, I, you're – Taking thoughts out of my mind, uh, and and throwing them out there, that it's so good. the The identity of what TCU is: Texas Christian University, Baylor University, Texas Tech University. The issue, one of the issues for Houston, is that it's Houston. If it was ex founder University, there's some some autonomy to that because when people think Houston sports, there are three or four bigger shows in town before you get to the Cougars. If there was a different name, right? If TCU was Fort Worth University, same deal. People would be like, oh, Fort Worth University, <laughs> massive city. How do you, where do you derive the branding for uniqueness within this university? That's what I think Houston's pit with another problem with is when you're kind of low on the totem pole due to the Astros and the Texans and the Rockets, how do you, how do you go out there and have people truly hate you as a brand? How, how do you tell Baylor fans to hate the word Houston? Well, and frankly, there's a lot of Baylor fans and all uh, the schools in the smaller towns. And I don't mean to hate on Waco and Lubbock or anything like that, but they, they but you tend- can, Parker. You can do that. <laughs> well, I'll hate on Waco. Uh, I actually have family in Lubbock, so I'm not going to hate them too hard. But I, I, I will say Waco is the. I mean, you've had in the '90s, you had like the FB. What was it? The big 1993, raid? 51 day siege. David Correa. <laughs> yeah. Killed so, like you know, people, yeah, uh, yeah, that you had. Uh, a, was a basketball player killed a teammate in like 03. 2003, Patrick Kennedy, yeah, Carlton <laughs> like, Dodson. Wait, Waco's a place where some like questionable stuff in my, again, I'm a little bit older. 2016 Art Bryles, Parker, don't shy no. away from it. I mean, the, the list <laughs> goes on, yeah. Houston fans remember Bryles from his time in Houston as well. It, I will say it's a place where some some questionable stuff has happened, um, but I people with college degrees from those smaller towns end up in the city of Houston, and I kind of think that's going to play into this rivalry some too, because mm-hmm. theoretically... If you're in, you know, a graduate from Baylor getting into oil and gas, you're going to move to Houston, right? If you're a graduate from yeah. Baylor, like, like those kinds of things seem fairly natural. I would push back on this idea Baylor's that Baylor's medical school is where, right? Right, Baylor's Houston, me- yeah. Texas, yeah. Uh, I would push back on the idea that the Houston brand hurts. The- I think it's just different because you look at like a lot of their pitch across town is like the hashtag is for the city, right? Like, like they're trying to be a, a school for this great large metropolitan area where like is if. Texas Tech said for Lubbock, or if Waco said, or if Baylor said for Waco, it wouldn't quite have the same the same chord. Um, yeah, I I look at the Baylor Bears in a number of different aspects, and, and like think the next year's football game could be fun. But you mentioned something about like the bottom rung of the Big Twelve right now and the preseason stuff, where you look at preseason all conference teams um, put out by the media or, or the 
preseason uh, Big 12 rankings, both of which we got to be a part of, right? And and I had Houston, I think, much higher on mine. And obviously, I had a few Houston Cougars on my list of all Big 12 conference guys. Houston and Central Florida were both left off completely, the all Big, Con- all Big 12 conference teams. Um, three of the four new schools are in the bottom four with West Virginia there with them of the preseason uh, rankings. It feels like the majority of Big 12 media just doesn't know what they're looking at. They don't know names and those kinds of things. Um, again, folks on my show know I put Houston much higher. I admittedly, if I'm being somewhat realistic, did not have them win the conference year one necessarily, but I had them much higher. And then I had like five guys and newcomer of the year coming out of Houston. Uh, admittedly, I'm paying attention more so to them than other schools. Did you have any love for Houston on your preseason ballot? Did you have anything going on there for the Cougars? Here's my cop out. This is this is wild. I I saw there's a, another a guy that I actually worked with for a couple of years and a lot of respect for David Smoke. 365 Sports, they put out great content all the time over there. And Smokey had posted, he said, "I'm not voting this year in the preseason poll because I just don't know." I don't know how these four teams will assimilate to the big 12 with Texas and Oklahoma. There are too many question marks and they haven't, I haven't seen these guys play. They haven't been in the league. I just can't drive myself to do it. And when I first saw that, I thought, come on, you know, watch, watch some tape, put it together. Come on. And then I started thinking about it. No. Yeah. There's a point to that. Haven't seen these guys play in this conference. They could walk in day one. Houston could walk in day one, win nine games, have four guys that were just unstoppable in the league. Houston, on the flip side, you go three and nine, and sure enough, no all Big 12 players. So to me, I, I balked at the idea of putting together these preseason, because I, I think this is, Parker, and this is going to help Houston fans, this is the single stupidest Big 12 football media preseason poll I have ever seen, and it's not close. I give the media a free pass for it, because of the nature of these four teams with Texas and Oklahoma being in the conference. But I think it's a little asinine to read really deep into what was put together because most of these guys just don't know. Yeah, and I feel like most people um, really don't have any clue as what they're looking at when they look at that kind of stuff and they look at Houston. Um, all right, let's talk about you know Baylor with, with Texas and Oklahoma leaving, as you mentioned. Yeah. Is Baylor set to be somewhat of a bully? I mean, they've been very strong in the con- TCU had a blip last year, um, fairly magical year, a bunch of very close games, including a close game against your Baylor Bears, that whole field goal thing at the end, right? Um, talk to me. Is is Baylor trying to take take control of this conference? Is it like it, are they the bully we got to knock off? This is a bigger thing than just our fan base is going back and forth because it's fun. I've seen that field goal one time, Parker. <laughs> One time, and it was in person. I watched it from the booth, and I said, I will never watch that ever again. And when it replays, I close my eyes, or I turn the channel. Um, yeah, I, I looking at where where some of these teams, TCU namely, some of these teams are coming from into next season, and even past, uh, past Texas and Oklahoma leaving. Do I think Baylor can be a bully? They can. I, I am probably undervaluing Baylor, where the rest of media is overvaluing Baylor. What I mean by that, I don't know. It's tough to justify Baylor being a top three or five team in the Big 12 next season after what they did last year. And going into next season, you look around and you say, from a homer standpoint, green and gold glasses, sure, this team can be really good, and there's great potential across the board. But if we're being realistic, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that's got to come together for this. See, people across the country are liking Baylor. I've seen them in top 20 rankings, top 25 rankings. I've seen them. They have uh, the 20th best odds to win the national championship out of anybody in college football. And I, people are really, really overvaluing. Uh, I, I don't, maybe it's overvaluing in my mind uh, where Dave Aranda and company will be next year. I think it's going to take a little bit to catch on. They've got a great home schedule. That's going to help them for sure. People love Dave Aranda and what he's done. I love Dave Aranda and what he's done. But I think there's an equal chance – that Baylor could go 10 and two as there is to Baylor going five and seven after what we saw last season, when everything fell apart. Do I think they'll go five and seven? Of course not. Do I think they'll go 10 and two? No, I don't. So Baylor being a bully in the big 12 soon, a lot of people would say yes to that without truly taking a step back and saying, okay, we only have one year of proof under Dave Aranda that this team can be a double digit win squad. Yeah, I just I look at Baylor next year. I think, frankly, that Houston game is going to be a fun, close, competitive one. Um, 
and the basketball thing is gonna be a ton of fun with the crier transfer and all of that as well. That's too Scott. I got. I, I will say I have respect for Scott Drew, even if I want to clown the basketball program some. Um, yeah. Just just because he is a strong coach. Um, but Drake, as we wrap this up, are you on Threads? Oh, dude, what? <laughs> threads is in like little uh, as a message boards. <laughs> That's what, that's what I mean, this, this new app. Anyway, I was going to say, you can find me at Panthers 512 on all social media forms, including this new Threads thing. Um, where can people find you and your work at? Uh, at Drake C. Toll on Twitter. Everything that I do <laughs> from Anchorage Bucks baseball to Baylor Bears to Big 12 to just giving old BYU fans a big hug. It's all all on Twitter. That's where that's the only my personality only exists on Twitter. So go find it. Baylor and TCU and BYU all about to be really close. Is that, what you're t- is yeah, that what's about to happen? Yeah. Uh, it might be. It might, <laughs> might be. Although we will still hate TCU. <laughs> all right. Well, and that's all we got today. Go Cougs. Uh, I don't sick. I don't know what you. Got, Bears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>